Ho, 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 Joe. Merry Trashmas. I'm glad you stepped away from the mic for that one. Okay, have another House of Gucci episode. How are you doing, buddy? I'm all right. It's our favorite holiday of the year. It's Trashmas, Joe. Uh, of course. Which means that here on Hot Trash Unlimited, the show where me, Caleb, and me, Joe, go to see movies that may or may not be hot trash, we are mixing things up. First off, we're seeing a movie that wasn't even in our category for hot trash, just something we thought would be fun to talk about mm-hmm. uh, as a little present to ourselves, but also afterwards, and you'll want to stick around for this, we are going to do our Hot Trash Awards. Are you really ranking? Oh. It's, we'll, we'll see what this year holds. Well, there won't be any unhinged. No, so. no, unfortunately not. So Joe, what did we see this week? We saw Spider-Man No Way Home. When you botched that spell where you wanted everyone to forget the Peter Parker Spider-Man, we started getting some visitors. from every universe. Hello, Peter. Separately from each other, so there was no gauging reactions of each other's faces like we normally have. Um, ooh, that would be fun. What do we think each other's reactions to the movie were? <laughs> do you remember what my initial take was? Yeah, yours was, yeah, it's good. It's got problems, but overall good. I wouldn't call it good. Oh, okay. I think is the best possible version of the movie it could be. That's what you said. Unfortunately, its foundation is two movies that aren't good. So (laughs) I, uh, you liked it. I did like it, but also it's not withstanding critique. Also, uh, you, if you take away the things that I really liked about this movie, you're left with things that I'm not huge on, but aren't necessarily bad. But that's also because it's built on two movies. I don't necessarily enjoy all that much. And this character has enough time to do something this big. Let's get into it. Yeah. Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home is about uh, Tom Holland's Spider-Man, and everyone knows he's Spider-Man, which he's upset about. So he goes to Doctor Strange, is like, can you make a spell to make people forget? But he bumbles up the spell, which creates a crack in the multiverse, which allows villains from various different other Spider-Man properties to slip through. Mm-hmm. And so he has to find a way to send them back, preferably in a way where they will not die when they get back. Well, that's that's uh, Peter's modus operandi. Yes. Strange is just like, well, we need to send them back as fast as we can before this does anything bad to the threads of the multiverse. And the movie ends with a very interesting sass quote shift that I imagine we will talk about. Oh, yes. But I do want to kind of get into, be as spoiler free as we possibly can be for, let's for say. For a little bit. Yeah, yeah, just for the first half. We usually just go full hog on the spoilers, but this is a newer movie that people are super excited mm-hmm. about. So- Joe, initial reactions. Yeah, overall, I thought it was good. Definitely the best of the other two solo Spider-Man movies we've gotten so far in the MCU. Yeah, I came out pleasantly surprised of this one where I had didn't have a big goofy grin on my face, but I was like, yeah. Because you've had pretty strong negative reactions to the last two. I have a very strong adverse reaction to Homecoming, and far from home, I despise the first half of it, and I find it almost unwatchable with how boring and just terribly unfunny it is. But then the last half, I'm like, oh, there's inklings of a decent Spider-Man movie in here. Yeah, the action especially, I think, shows some promise, and I think Mysterio is a good villain. Mm-hmm. In fact, I'd say the villains were never the problem with no, the Tom it, it is it has been with the hero and his supporting cast. Yeah, the tone, I really don't like the high school tone that they go for, and I feel like that's one of my bigger issues here, is that it wants to be a movie that takes itself fairly seriously, but you also have to juggle in the goofier high school nature of Tom Holland, or of his Spider-Man. I'm gonna kind of use Tom Holland as a catch-all for it. Mm-hmm. Just the overall vibe of the MCU Spider-Man. Which I think saying his name easily captures that. Yes, I, but I don't want it to be like Tom Holland is the sole responsibility. <laughs> Honestly, John Watts is probably where most of my problems uh-huh. with these movies lie. That was the struggle I had with this movie, is that the first act, which is very long, yes. before we really get into the meat of the story, is so focused on him going back to high school and if he'll get into college and his dumb teachers, which only have one scene. Thank but- God. <laughs> yeah, I mean... The lack of high school stuff in this movie was a breath of fresh air for me, but the stuff that was there was not good (laughs) at all. Can we we expand on this? Because a lot of people are like, Peter Parker is supposed to be in high school. False. (laughs) (laughs) He doesn't spend that much time in the comics in high school. Like 30 issues. It's like three years of this, what, 50-year comic run? Yeah, all the Ditko stuff. And then eventually 
he moves on. Does he start to move on to he college? He moves on the, during Ditko. Yeah. Okay, okay. I thought it was in the Ramita stuff. No. It's even before then. <laughs> no. But I think because of the cartoons, he's in high school a lot of the time. I mean, it's a good place to put him in, like a children's adaptation and stuff. And I get why they wanted to put him in, put him in there for uh, the start of a movie trilogy, but they've kept him there for so long. Yeah, and I think the problem here is that like it doesn't feel like an authentic high school experience. It feels like this very constructed throwback experience. Yeah. And I want the Spider-Man stuff to focus on like him as a hero. I don't really care about the surrounding like aesthetics and stuff. I'll, I'll bite you on that one. I, I think the most compelling part about Spider-Man is him juggling the two identities. Problem is, I feel like in the last movies, they've been... Homecoming, he kind of had to juggle it. Like theoretically the pro there's just there's always a big uh disconnect between the two where it doesn't feel like the stakes of the spider-man stuff has much impact on the human stuff in this movie yeah or in these movies yeah i think a human big, stuff I normal think, peter parker stuff yeah and i think a big part of it just is it feels so low stakes so much of the time in this movie when he does inevitably like swing around the city i'm like wow we haven't got a ton of him swinging around new york and we barely got any two. of this cuz he swings around the boroughs in homecoming and then obviously he's in europe and far from home it felt weird seeing tom holland like there's that part well that's a spoiler i can't say it but i want to i want to preface this by all saying i don't really care because there are four cinematic spider-man franchises and i like two and a half of them mm -hmm. i have some issues with the andrew garfield universe but overall like i have nostalgia for it and yeah. i i like it um yeah. and i the raimi stuff and the uh animated stuff are great so i don't really mind that i don't like the tom holland stuff but there are some things that were very present in the first act of this movie it did not engage me well i think a part of the stakes the lack of stakes that you talk about everybody who matters to Peter knows he's Spider-Man. So there's never any stakes of him having to keep it separate or like keep them out of it. They know mm -hmm. they're in it. And it's like, eh, that might be refreshing, but it doesn't exactly make for a compelling narrative a lot of the time. Yeah, I think the big problem is that you just don't have time to sit in mm -hmm. these relationships and stuff because it's always go, go to the next thing. We have to tie him into the rest of the MCU and stuff like that. And of course, in this version, tie him into previous Spider-Man continuities as well. So I feel like while this is priming a lot of character development. It never really has time to explore that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get we get this story. How did you like the whole him having to juggle being a public hero now? Uh, public enemy, enemy number one. You yeah, mean. the menace. The menace. That is Spider-Man. Yeah, public enemy number one. <sighs> he doesn't have to juggle it. He's getting harassed for most of this long first act, and then act two pops up, and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So, I, I don't know. He has to prove... He has to prove himself to the mit chair to get his friends back in oh no spider-man has to save people like he does yeah that's my oh thing no. with that scene it's like oh what made this different than the billion of other times he saved people yeah but i don't know I, I feel like there is enough there and it's like huh this is really trying to get to like an emotional place with this character but then he walks into school and it's just the dumb high school jokes again. Mm. And so that's where I think the tonal problems really hit with this. But moving forward, he goes to Doctor Strange, they flub up the spell, and then Alfred Molina shows up. I mean, should we say spoiler enters here? He is in the trailer, but there are... Any, yeah, okay. Anything else you want to say about the movie overall before we get into spoilers? No, I got my thoughts out. Okay. It is, it's a good movie overall. Yeah. Um, I will but say... But there's a lot of nitty gritty that goes into... It's, it's a good movie things being held like separate from the movie itself i i will say my enjoyment of this movie skyrocketed immensely as the film went on but that's also because i kind of gave up i'm like okay i'm not going to be able to emotionally invest in this like i want to with movies mm -hmm. so i'm just going to enjoy the fan service whether it is good or not because there is good and bad fan service yes. in here and i was just like I'll just soak it all in. I'll turn off my brain. So I think that's why I would not say this is a good movie because I don't think that it engages the viewer that well. But that could also be just because I don't like Tom Holland. So from this point on, spoilers. Alfred Molina shows up. Danny Rojas shows up. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot to get till we get there. We got a lot to go. Yeah, Doc Ock shows up. It is Spider-Man 2 Doc Ock. Shows up, there's a big fight on a bridge. They get solved. My favorite way Spider-Man solves problems. 
Stark technology. Can't can't do anything yourself, buddy. <laughs> he makes a great sidekick. At yeah. least at least here, the way he's using it, it, it seems like his intellect is what's driving it, and it's not he lucks into it. Eh, he lucks into it. Maybe I he think lucks into it. I think just as the film goes on, he earns it more. He does. He does. It was it was a Iron Boy Junior moment on my bingo card that uh, got me right there. Yeah, they have a fight. Doc Ock absorbs part of Spider Man's. Iron Spider suit from Infinity War. It gives Peter control over the arms so that Doc Ock is no longer a threat anymore. And uh, Doctor Strange zaps him into, but before, yeah, before Doctor Strange zaps him into their little prison cell, you see Green Goblin show up. Spider Man 1 Green Goblin. Unfortunately, not Dane DeHaan, but we'll take what we can get. I say that in complete jest. I love Willem Dafoe in this movie. Anyone who's surprised by that doesn't know what podcast they've been listening to yeah. for the last 55 episodes. Yeah. And then Doctor Strange zaps them back into their little prison thing where uh, Lizard is also there and Doc Ock is now there. And he's like, we've opened up dimensional terrors. Bunch of villains are here. We got to go round them up. Uh, that American accent sounds a little too natural. We have to go round up the villains. I am Doctor Stephen Strange. He sounded better in this movie. Uh, he's slowly getting better. I saw him in The Power of Dog and he's doing like a period accent. So I think that helps. But I'm like, oh, Ben, you can do an American accent. What have you been doing for the past like four Marvel movies? <laughs> so the next like what half hour becomes rounding up the villains. There's only one scene where they're really getting them because they get Electro and Sandman in mm-hmm. one. But then they find a way to get Green Goblin without making like a big spectacle yeah electro and sandman's fight is uh the first one where i had like legitimate joy at seeing these old things i hadn't seen in a little bit electro shows up and yes he is blue yes and blue yes, electro there's dubstep <laughs> no rapping but <laughs> uh, it's a decently engaging fight i think i think it's fun when sandman shows up and he's i'm like yeah you're not a bad guy you're you guys are cool he's yeah. like peter you remember me <laughs> flint marco <laughs> He's he's a good guy, but he also By is circumstance. Like, he is not here for it. Like no. he does he does not want any of this interdimensional nonsense. No, 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 no. He I want to get back to my daughter. But seeing them team up is cool. I like Peter's suit that he has in this. Um Oh, his it's his suit inside out. Yeah, I recognize like it's clearly an homage to some suit that was in the comics at yeah. one point, but I'm forgetting which suit that is. I wish he had kept it, but we'll get into that. I think he shouldn't have gone back to the iron spider suit he doesn't go back to the iron spider suit it's well, a new suit yeah we should it just looks like the iron spider suit yeah he shouldn't have gone back to his far from home suit but yeah cool scene jamie fox eating up this scenery yes like he's having way more fun with it going to town on it he's clearly like okay i get to redeem myself for spider-man amazing spider-man 2 <laughs> but it's it's not like a complete departure from the character either no no yeah. it's it's like a it's an evolution of what that character would be like mm-hmm. if the movie had continued <laughs> mm-hmm. i love i love the moment they're back in the prison cell and they're like you all died fighting spider-man and electra's like no no no, i was about to overload the power grid and <laughs> i died <laughs> One of my biggest problems with the villains is that Sandman doesn't make a lot of sense after the initial meeting because shouldn't Sandman then be concerned that Spider-Man's going to kill, kill him? him? Yeah. But he doesn't. And then he just yeets himself away from Spider-Man halfway through the movie. And you're like, wait, but why? When you show up at the end, you just want him to send home. Why didn't you just stick with him? Yeah. Like, but <laughs> if you make fun of Lizard and his terrible, terrible motivations. <laughs> and Lizard talks, which I did not think I did was going to I expect Lizard to talk. I thought he was going to be growling the entire time. And then sure enough, that mouth opens right back up. And I, I and just thought they were going to give him a snout and they didn't. The Amazing Spider-Man universe while it's trying to take itself very seriously in a lot of aspects it is like the most saturday morning cartoony when it comes to its villains and so the fact that they're able to be like yes my plan was great i was gonna turn everyone into lizards and then oh yeah no i fell into a vat of electric electric ears ears. (laughs) making fun of that stuff is so much fun i feel like the actors themselves are very self-aware now i do think that tone conflicts with when the movie is trying to take itself seriously yes i have i have Two very specific moments. One one very specific moment, one less so. But at least in this, in when the villains are just hanging out, it all works. Um, Doctor Strange is like, cool, we've got them all up. Time to kill them. And Peter's like, no, I won't let you do that. I'm going to trap you in the Grand Canyon or whatever with geometry. Yeah, it's the mirror dimension. Yeah, but he ends up in the Grand Canyon or something like that is what he said. Or was it just like the Ooh. Grand Canyon mirror? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's the the Grand Canyon in the mirror dimension. Okay, Tra- traps Doctor Strange there. Doctor Strange is surprisingly absent from the rest of the movie for the most part, which I, I'm fine with. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense that you'd put these two characters together more sense than I think the other characters they've teamed him up with because these were these are both Ditko boys. They have a relationship oh, in the also comics team up and stuff consistently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I like seeing that, and I think their fight is cool. 
but Doctor Strange should not be in this movie as much as Spider-Man, and especially because you have to get him out of the way so we can make room for the others. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm fine with that. Uh, Green Goblin, after his initial attack, switches back to his Norman persona. He smashes the mask. Smashes the mask. No, because I like that they then progressively make his costume more comic. I wish we would have seen him more in the mask before he smashed it. That's, that's I would because all we get is him flying in that first time and that's it. Yeah, that's fair. And then so he runs off. He ends up at May's food shelter Feast. where Peter goes and find him. He's conveniently wearing the green goblin colors. <laughs> well, he's wearing he's wearing his suit with a purple hoodie over it with a green jacket yes. over that. <laughs> um, so they take him to the Sanctum Sanctorum and Aunt May starts having character for the first time in any of these movies. <laughs> Which immediately tipped me off to one, she was going to say, with great power must come great responsibility, which is cool. I like that they gave that to her. And then two, if she's going to say that, that means she's going to (laughs) die. So I got spoiled about uh, Aunt May's death before I saw the movie. I was like, "Eh, you know, whatever. Like, I've been spoiled on things before. It doesn't ruin my enjoyment of a movie. But yeah, it's pretty obvious from the moment the movie starts, she has a lot more screen time than she's gotten in any of these other movies with like a lot with character for yeah. the first time. Uh, yeah, it, it was pretty obvious. The writing was on the walls. The webbing was on the walls. <laughs> so they take all the villains to Happy Hogan's apartment where they've been staying, and they start working on trying to fix them of their myriad mm-hmm. ailments. Start with Doc Ock, get him back up. Then Doc says the wrong thing to Norman, which triggers the goblin persona. I had a different thought of that when they had this like slow zoom on the back of Willem's head. It clues you in right then. It's like, oh. Well, and he changes his voice, too. Yeah, for a second. I was like, oh, Norman hasn't been back the entire, like, at all this entire time. That, that was my understanding. Um, Yeah. I was, I was like, Goblin's been parading this all around. Yeah, I don't think it matters which way it is, but I think you can easily read it either way. You could even read it like Goblin's letting Norman have the control. I Well, I thought that but... for a second, and I was like, no, he would have let, he wouldn't have made Doc Ock's chip work, like, if he was trying to trigger everything. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But yeah, I think, honestly, to the benefit of the movie, that you can read it a bunch of different ways and as goofy as Willem Dafoe's performance is here and it is very goofy he is just going full hog on it I think it is still a very good performance with a lot of subtleties and I think that arbitrariness kind of speaks to his performance so yeah they're making all de-villainifiers for everybody um when all except for Lizard who they decided to keep in the truck truck, because I guess they didn't want a great plan there (laughs) guess they didn't want to put him in an apartment i was waiting when they're going through the door and you see it through this i was like and then a giant lizard walks through and it didn't happen especially because of out of all the villains he has like the plan that has like the most effect uh-huh. like if doc ock or goblin get loose you just fight them because all they kind of want to do is take over things but that's a that's a much goblin more is an agent of chaos yeah it's a much more abstract plan lizard has a goal <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna turn everyone in the lizard mcu a into- goal and also like uh a certain character says later in the movie, I've dealt with him before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I love the lizard. It's so funny. <laughs> and somehow the lizard has spider sense because he knows that goblins turned evil beforehand because he makes a little comment about it to himself. Lizard sense. Lizard it, sense, It's, it's yes. faster acting than spider sense. Uh, yeah, that must be in the comics, yes. I assume. The Dan Slot era. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and then I think the first good usage of spider sense in this movie trilogy. No, 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 no. Because when Doctor Strange is trying to get the box back and he astral projects Peter's body out of out of oh and the yeah. arms moving yeah. yeah the spider sense is stopping him I think that's really cool that's really cool too I, I forgot about that one but I thought I was like oh yeah they didn't even say that it was spider sense that's yeah. cool like good they're not treating me like an idiot yeah that is a really good moment but this one where Peter's spider sense starts going off he's looking around the room everything's in slow motion a little bit and he's like crap I'm in a room of villains which one is this going yeah. off at really good moment and then web zip Norman's arm against the wall with a canister yeah and then Gobby's back in full hammy goblinness. Oh, it's great. It's slightly different from the other ones. In Spider-Man 1, he's so hyper-focused on Spider-Man, but in this one, he's like going full like incel mode where he's like, <laughs> the woman has made you weak, Peter. <laughs> you don't have a compass. <laughs> You're like me. That part's fun. And then so Electro, who's already clearly having doubts about this. Um, Zip steps out. Yeah, he, he leaves before he can get his electricity taken away and then sandman for whatever reason leaves dips <laughs> doc ock leaves as well doc ock fights yeah he fights but then he leaves yeah which he i think thrown out the building i think dips. makes sense lizard takes us as his excuse to leave as well and like that all the villains are out of the, well except for goblin yes their fight continues it's pretty brutal it's, it's a good fight it's very it's ramey good. it's a good fight and it makes you think oh yeah goblin is strong goblin can go toe-to-toe physically with spider-man oh yeah yeah and 
it looks like Tom Holland is getting hurt. Mm -hmm. His suit isn't getting torn up, which I wish they did, because that's something that's so present in the other movies. Mm -hmm. But um, he's clearly hurt. But it ends with Aunt May getting injured by the glider. Um, And a pumpkin mom. Yes. That doesn't blow off half of Peter's face. Sadly. And that's when she says the line after Goblin leaves and Peter's trying to triage her. He's like, I shouldn't have done all this. I should have just sent him back. And she has she has the line and then dies and Peter zip zaps away. After getting shot at. Yes. Bones are out of the movie for now. Peter's on the run. Time for some familiar faces. Yes. So we cut back to two characters we have not spoken of at all, MJ and Ned at Ned's home. Yeah. With his uh his tea or is it his Lola is her name? Is it his grandma or is it mom? I couldn't tell. I think it's his grandma. Okay. Because I think he says something about that at one point. Okay. Love the grandma. She's great, by the way. <laughs> uh, and they're like, we need to find Peter. And Ned has previously taken the sling ring from Peter, who got it from Doctor Strange. And there's a joke at some point where it's like, my grandma says I'm magical. And he's just like, where's Peter? And then a little sling ring portal begins to open. So they keep trying, like, bring me Peter Parker. And then it opens. There's an alleyway. And you see a big old head. In the distance. Big old head with wolverine hair. A little British boy, but not the little British boy we've been watching. Out comes the best actor to play Peter Parker. Yes. Not the best Peter Parker necessarily, but just like the best, the actor. best actor. Andy Garfield. Mm-hmm. I was about to call him Andrew McGuire. That is not his name. <laughs> Andrew <The> Garfield. Child. <laughs> Andrew Garfield pops out and uh, I'm kind of in love with him as soon as he takes off the mask and he, starts talking. The faults with his movies were never on him. Mm-hmm. He was always such a good Spider-Man. And I even like the Peter. Yes, he, he seems a I don't little... Like him, I don't like him in Amazing Spider-Man 1, but in 2, I really like him. He seems a little too cool to be Peter Parker, I will admit that. Which they but, make a joke about. Yes, but I do just think he's like... He brings all of his acting talent to this, a role that he could sleepwalk through if he wanted yes. to. But it's clear that he still really likes Spider-Man, and he really wants to have fun with this. Yeah, really good, really fun scene. Goes on a little bit too long with them telling him to jump on the ceiling. It's fan service. Yeah, it I'm is. Fine. It is. There's a lot of these moments that go on for a little bit too long once the once the Spider-Man come in. Yeah, like I said, I had turned off my brain at this point. Any fan service was good fan service <laughs> to me. And then they open up another portal. They're like, bring me Peter Parker. And out comes old man Toby. And by God, does he look old? <laughs> Over on uh, a friend's podcast. Um, why is? Why is with Ty and Dan. Tyler and Danny have been having kind of this discussion up to this movie about whether or not they would de-age Toby. And I'm really glad they didn't. I'm glad they didn't. It gives him this like old, wise, more mellow Spider-Man. He's been through a lot. He's learned a lot. He is this like mentor to the other two. Yeah. Which I really appreciate. It's a little jarring seeing him sold when everybody else is so young, especially the villains. I- I'm glad that Doc Ock has a line later on where he's like, you've grown up. And it's like, oh, thank God they've noticed or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. It's not... Like he's also in his civvies. He's not in. He looks like a rad youth pastor. Yeah. So it does. That's also a little jarring. That also adds to the old man effect of it. Yeah. He pops in more jokes for a little bit. And then they're like, oh, yeah, I had a whenever I got angsty, I would go sit on the top of a tall building. And so they're like, oh, I know where he is then. And he's on top of their school. Yeah. There's the Empire State Building. The Chrysler Chrysler Building. building. Midtown High. Yeah. (laughs) You see what I mean about it's weird to see him around tall buildings. Yeah. So they go there. Tommy Peter is shaken up as you would be. Tom Holland is a good actor. Zendaya is a good actor. The kid who plays Ned are good actors. When they have the opportunity to show emotion, they're very good. It's just oftentimes that emotion's undercut. Mm -hmm. But yeah, then we get- This is a moment where they let it breathe for a little bit. So then we get the scene from Spider-Verse where they uh, have to talk about Uncle Ben dying. <laughs> Which got me angry. Well, no, I, I, I had fake anger at one when uh, they start, when Toby, or Tom, God, this is going to be so confusing. Tom's Peter goes, well, Aunt May told me with great power, and then Toby starts, fin- comes great. And then Andrew's Peter says responsibility. I was like, you never had yeah, someone no, tell you says, this. <laughs> so he's like, how do you know that? And Toby goes, Uncle Ben told me. And then Andrew Garfield says, mine too. But he should have said, my father had a philosophy. <laughs> I was like, you've never had that told to you, you son of a... <laughs> you've had a lot else told to you. A lot of phrases dancing around it. Oh, what if they had gone like full self-aware and just been like, that's amazing. What? what? Your, your aunt and uncle are so smart. <laughs> but a moment that I don't like is they talk about their Uncle Ben. and Nothing from Tom. Okay, so what I like about this is McGuire talks about Uncle Ben. Garfield doesn't. Talks about Gwen. He talks about Gwen, which I like. Well, that's his big guilty one. Yeah. So because he does that, I'm like, cool. They all have a different start point. And it really does seem like that part from Spider-Verse where it's like, it was my uncle. It was my best friend. We've all lost someone, right? Mm -hmm. A little distracting that's so close to that. It's almost like they're copying homework or something. But that made it fine. 
I understand why as a fan of the comics, you want Uncle Ben in these movies. I have come to accept that they will never acknowledge his existence. I, it was more of a, okay, there's no reaction from Uncle Ben. I have a much bigger moment at the end of the movie. How do you think Uncle Ben died in this? Because I don't think it's- like it's, heart disease or something. Yeah, yeah. clearly it wasn't traumatic. <laughs> he existed at one point. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, but I've come to accept that. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll get over myself eventually. It's and I'm fine with Aunt May being the Uncle Ben figure in this. That's fine. She's had build up to where you kind of care about it a little bit more. But man, his absence is so present in, with this with Tom's motivation. I don't know. With the end of this movie, I've just come to imagine all these three movies as one origin movie. It really is him and Spider-Man coming into his own and the Aunt May standing in. So at least they're doing something different with it, you know? Mm-hmm. So then they go back to the lab to perfect the de-villainifiers, which has another MCU moment where they're all talking about, they're like, oh, what happened to this? Oh, you're his best friend? Yeah, I had a best friend once. Died in my arms. It was heartbreaking. And then just sit on that scene while Ned's awkwardly being goofy. It's really awkward because Toby is playing it completely straight. Yep. <laughs> Don't like that. When Ned turns into the Hobgoblin in the comics, does he? Is it magic or science? It's science. He's okay. also completely unrelated to Spider Man. He's just yeah. a guy. I wonder how <laughs> he's much... a character. Ned in the movies is a character with the name of Ned Leeds. He is nothing like Ned Leeds in the comics. Because <laughs> I was wondering, it's like, is this all supposed? It's like a businessman. To... It's like, is this all supposed to be teasing Ned as a bad guy? I don't know. I, I don't know. I really can't tell. But you know, really dumb jokes where it's like, Peter, wait, which Peter? Oh. Um, I'm Peter bingo, one. bingo. Yeah, yeah. A bunch of dumb jokes, but you know, at a certain point, kind of whatever. Yeah, it's it's stuff you expect. I said this movie was good. I didn't say it wasn't predictable. <laughs> yeah, they get all it done. They do they do the science, which is fun. Andrew Garfield especially is going full Andrew Garfield Spider Man like full running, like manic crazy. Yeah, like lab, putting yeah. on a lab coat, running around. It's fun. And then Toby's just there. It's me. I have a job to do. Mm-hmm. I'm a I'm a middle aged man. <laughs> then they're like, all right, time to go. Like, you even have a suit, and he's been wearing it under his shirt the entire time, which I was like, that's nice. I'm glad he, he doesn't have to suit up. He's always got it on. And then they head out to the Statue of Liberty, which is being remodeled. I don't know if they bring this up in Falcon and Winter Soldier. They I make, think they do. That's yeah. where it got like planted. They made a reference to it in Hawkeye this last oh, episode. Okay. It's a very small, very niche reference it which is like oh cool small things like how you can see the rogers musical billboard in this movie oh you um, can yeah okay. when they're swinging through the city it's pretty cool but i don't think this would ever happen it's such an <laughs> it's so weird <laughs> first off you don't renovate old monuments like <laughs> we haven't said what they're doing yet yeah okay they're they're replacing the torch on the statue of liberty <laughs> with the giant captain america <laughs> shield which also just like because it's so big seems like it would just the statue of liberty would fall, fall over, over. <laughs> it's silly but Whatever. Yeah, they get there. They have uh, another long extended scene of them just talking with each other, which I liked. They make a joke about Peter's organic uh, weapon. Well, that and Toby's back injury. On the, yes, they do. Yeah. I forgot about that. That's that's a nice little clever mm-hmm. joke. Raimi meme. Yeah, a nice little subtle of which Raimi there are meme. A, a couple. Yeah. And then the villains start popping up. One by one, they, they throw back. They come back. Electro's yellow now, full on. He's got the mask for a second, which is fine. I'm glad that he didn't have a star-shaped electricity mask on his face the entire time. Whenever he lights up, he has the mask. That's cool. That's what, that's a good way to do it. Toby takes, uh, they aren't well, they, good they at start, fighting yeah, together. Yeah, they aren't good at fighting together. And then they're like, oh, now we got it. Which I really like how supportive these guys are. They're really just there for each other because it's like, Tom Holland's like, I don't mean to brag, but I'm an Avenger. And everyone's like, that's really cool. We don't know what that is. <laughs> but they do take Tom Holland's lead and they start getting better at fighting. They get Sandman desanded. They get Lizard, D-Lizard. Doctor Strange comes back and he's like, okay, I guess I have to go with this mm-hmm. now. And then Doc Ock shows up and for a minute you think he's going to be evil. But then he, elect- he de-electro is Electro. And we, we start to get moments between the old Peters and the old villains, which I like. Yeah, it's really good. Ma- Max is a little weird. Was it the electricity that drove you crazy or your desire to be cool that drove you crazy? <laughs> I think it's a mix of the two, right? Yeah. Like he finally had the opportunity to be cool. Mm-hmm. It's just also that opportunity came with extremely destructive powers. Yeah, yeah you get good moments between everybody. Lizard and... Thomas Hayden Church don't get any opportunity to talk. Uh, same in Thomas Hayden Church has a couple lines with Peter. After oh, does he? He's after? De-sanded. Okay. Yeah. It just led me more to believe that they weren't actually there. Yeah. <laughs> the big moment. The big moment with Toby is with Doc Ock, which is good. I really yeah. like it. But yeah, it's it's very clear that the lizard and Sandman they did not get the actors to come in. They just voiced their characters and then digitally recreated them for which the de aging and stuff is good in this movie. Yes. Yeah. Like it's, it's not distracting. 
Yeah, it's more noticeable with Sandman because, you know, grew up watching San- Spider-Man 3. You're just very familiar with these expressions he's giving and yes. stuff. There are some wonky effects in this, but it's usually... Yeah, it's not It's not on bodies, I don't yeah. think. It's on... It's usually in the action. Yeah. Which, that is one of my big problems with this third act. And I've been teasing it a little bit, but all their Spider-Man suits in action look way too similar to each other. Yeah, it's been... A, it was a little hard to keep control of them. I was, I was happy when the full Raimi suit got put on. I was like, because that's the best suit. I still think it's the best suit out of all of them. It is, but I think it would have made sense if he had just stayed in his civvies and swung around. I would have hated that. (laughs) (laughs) I guess, but it would just made the action way more legible. And then if Tom Holland had kept the inverse suit Mm -hmm. or just He's got a giant yellow mark on him now, but... Yeah, it's just when they're all swinging around and there's motion blur... And it's dark. They all sound somewhat similar. It's just hard to tell. Toby had a cowabunga yeah. thing that he did i was like yay <laughs> toby is so much fun uh-huh too bad he's a bad person <laughs> <laughs> there was a moment where he's like I'm trying to be better and i was like is this like a toby mcguire speaking or <laughs> toby mcguire's peter parker speaking right now <laughs> my dream for um for the animated spider-verse because that's where we'll get all the cool spider-men like spider's man and mm-hmm. reeve carney but um <laughs> All the cool Spider-Man, like Reeve Carney. <laughs> Michael Sarah played Tobey Maguire in Molly's game, and I really want them to have Michael Sarah Spider-Man. <laughs> I think that'd be a very fun joke that they definitely won't do. But Green Goblin comes back, and I laughed when he left the wreckage of Happy's apartment the first time. It looks more like the Goblin suit, but it's just because he's wearing like a hoodie, and it just mm-hmm. looks like a hoodie. <laughs> yeah. Well, and his, his whole thing is tattered. It looks yeah. like the rags and yeah, stuff. Yeah, but then when he comes back, it looks a lot better when he has goggles, and it's mm-hmm. more tattered. And this is where the stakes of the movie felt a little lower to me, where I was like, Okay, one Spider-Man took care of this guy. We got three and Doc Ock on your side now. This should be no problem at all. Yeah, the problem here is more... Because they do kind of defeat him pretty quickly. Yes. But then the the big problem here is not beating him, but whether or not Tom Tom has a moral dilemma now. (laughs) Now, I don't know what Tom Holland's like in real life. If he came up to me, I would be like, there is not a person on earth who is less disposed to nonviolence than this person. <laughs> he just, he looks so innocent. And so when he's like, he tells Goblin, it's like, I'm going to kill you. I'm, I had to laugh. I, I can't buy it. <laughs> I think if, if they hadn't like built up to like, I'm going to kill you. Like, or like talked about the moral dilemma before it before there, there was never an inkling in me that was like, yeah, he got goblins going to die. Yeah. Especially because he's already had his moment with the other Spider-Man mm-hmm. to grieve and stuff. And so like, it felt like it was kind of him backsliding a bit, but he doesn't kill him. No, Toby gets stabbed. And I almost walked out of the movie. They weren't going to kill him though. At that point, I thought it was pretty clear. My, my, my time- hand was on my knee and I just like <laughs> squeezed it as hard as I could. <laughs> Every time someone got stabbed with the glider, I just kept being like, the wounds from your father <laughs> came gilder. from its own gilder. <laughs> That's the problem. The, the the Raimi movies by themselves really work, but I think if you bring them into any other context, the memes take over <laughs> at a certain point. But um, they all have their moment. Doctor Strange comes back, but the universe is breaking apart because of all this. And you, you see a rhino figurine. You see a bunch of people. Rhino's the only one I recognize. I only recognize Rhino. But I bet if you pause it, you can yeah. see a bunch of people. So Peter comes back and it's like, hey, you know that spell that we were doing that would make people forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. What if we just made everybody forget about Peter, Peter Parker, Parker was. Which is such an interesting status quo shift. Spider-Man's character is built on two bad decisions. You have to pick the one that will work best. Mm-hmm. And there's there and there's no winning from either of them. Yeah. That is such a good Peter Parker decision to make. And it's the first one he's had to make in this movie trilogy. Yeah. Which is why this, this movie trilogy has felt like one origin movie. Finally, by the end of this movie, he has learned how to be a hero. Too bad it took six and a half hours or however long to well, for that to happen he was in a bunch of other movies too yeah but i don't count those as much because he's just in the background i don't expect development from yeah. him there but yeah he makes this decision i think everyone acts it very well i think zendaya though who is the best actor of the three kids is just going to town on this all the acting she didn't get to do in dune she brought into no way home <laughs> I've always liked her as MJ. She's been like my favorite part of the high school stuff. But this is, I I feel like this was her best work so far. She was pretty good. And so, yeah, they cast a spell. Everyone forgets that Peter is Peter. You still have uh, J. Jonah Jameson. I almost said Alex Jones. Yeah, almost have Alex J. Jonah Jameson. You have him going. He's a menace. (laughs) Yeah, he's a menace. Too bad we don't know who he is. (laughs) And then it ends with Peter going back to tell Mary Jane and Ned about him. But neither of them know who he is. He sees like one of the wounds on MJ's face and he's like, I can't do this. Which is good. Great. 
I was like, well, this doesn't make any sense if they immediately, if she immediately remembers, but it's like, good. He he knows he's just going to put them in more danger. Move on. And so he gets an apartment, which I, you hear the, you hear rents due on the first of the month and you're like, Mr. Dinkovich, is it you? (laughs) He might not even be alive anymore. I don't know. know. It would have been great to see him, but then he makes his own suit. It looks kind of sparkly, a little too sparkly, but overall it's good. And then he starts swinging through the city and I'm like, cool. This is a Peter who knows who he is who doesn't have other people to fall back on like other heroes doesn't have anyone else to fall back on and he's in the city Mm -hmm. and he's out of high school Mm -hmm. this feels like finally we are getting peter parker there's one more scene that we've skipped peter is visiting may's grave as all good spider-man movies must end (laughs) and happy (laughs) shows up and happy doesn't know who he is he's just like how'd you know her through spider-man they're all sad there's no ben grave that seemed like a weird it's weird missed opportunity i don't think it's a problem it's just weird it's weird maybe ben's not dead (laughs) He has his bag and far from home. They talk about in the first, like in Civil War for a little bit. Maybe he just divorced me. They have the amazing speech where it's like, if you have the power to do good things and bad things happen while you could do good things. Oh, it's weird. Yeah, I can't defend it. It's it's so weird. But it's also like, I'm like, fine, cool. Let's just put all of this. All of the John Watts trilogy behind us behind at this us. point. Yeah, let him ruin the Fantastic Four <laughs> and get a better director for these movies. Uh, oh, and then we get a post credit scene. Yeah, with Danny Rojas and Venom. And Venom. So Tom Hardy's Venom is there, talking with Venom, being crazy, then looking just sleepy beyond relief. Do you think Tom to... Hardy has ever had a good night's sleep? Never. Well, it, when he was filming Inception, he looks pretty good there. Yeah. <laughs> and then he zipped back to the spump as fast as he as fast as he came. He's gone. The logic there doesn't even make sense because the only people who got brought over were people who knew that Peter Parker was Spider Man. Mm hmm. <laughs> but he has he didn't know who Peter Parker was. He didn't know who Spider-Man was. But he is talking to Danny Rojas from Ted Lasso, which is great. <laughs> he does leave behind a I'm little drop of Danny the too. The, the character acts the same way Danny does. No, he's not excited. He, I guess it's yeah, he's a tra- sad. His family's been gone for five years. Yeah, it's a traumatized Danny. Maybe. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how this could fit in because he would have to it stop takes place playing in the future. Yeah, he would have to stop playing football. Do you think Richmond, too many of the Richmond players <laughs> got, got blipped. blipped so the <laughs> the club couldn't continue? Like Ted and uh, Ted and Rebecca got blipped and stuff. How do we link it? But yeah, leaves behind a drop of the symbiote so we might get black suit. Oh, Woo. Yeah, Venom. Yeah, yeah. And Venom's off to fight Michael Morbius uh-huh. in an upcoming episode of Hot Trash Unlimited. <laughs> and that's No Way Home. I like the status quo it sets up at the end. Yes, I'm, I I'm, like Everything involving the Tasm universe and the Raimi universe. Uh, as I was at the end of Far From Home, the character has grown a little bit to where I can see the next movie being good. And this movie was better than Far From Home because it didn't have an hour of awful high school stuff. It only had 30 minutes of awful high school stuff. And uh, now I'm like, oh, cool. I don't think we can have any more awful high school stuff in the next movie. We can have awful college stuff. Even better. Do you want to do a bit of speculation on where we think? Nah, I, I couldn't have predicted this happening. So I think that, I, I, I still I still don't think this movie is good on its own because you take away the Raimi and the Tasm stuff and I'm still left with stuff I'm not huge on. Yeah, but which is ultimately why I don't like the movie, I think, because I only enjoyed extra textual stuff from it. I will say I think you'll be very disappointed because I think we'll get maybe one movie with him on his own and then I think they'll bring in Miles. And I think at yeah. the end of this next trilogy, because I do think we'll probably get three more, I do think he'll die. That's fine. I'm not attached to this <laughs> character at all. And I'm excited to see Miles, but like that's so far in the future that who knows what MCU Miles will be coming into. Mm-hmm. So. Or Kevin Feige will shove him into a portal and he'll be stuck in the spump. <laughs> Yes, we know it's not called the Spump Game or No, it, it will be the Spump in my heart. Best of the best of the Hollands. Oh yeah. Um I'm No contest. Excited for anyone who likes Tom Holland. This seems like a great capstone for this trilogy. Um just that foundation for me kept me from like fully enjoying the movie, along with like some of the tonal stuff. Yeah, I'm on the same page. But you ended up I think you liked it more than me. I mean, yeah, I, I, I wanted to wait to write my review on Letterboxd afterwards because I'm like, I had a very adverse reaction to homecoming that i had written my review right coming out of the theater and it was completely different from what i had thought like a day later and i'm still thinking about it i'm like yeah the movie's overall good and the stuff that i don't like has changed a little bit but i also can't think of this movie without the the multiverse elements in it because that is like entirely what it's but it's it's about yeah norman or willem defoe's green goblin i'm like thank god it was you and not like 
another replacement goblin because I don't think anybody could have done this better because I would have just been comparing them to the other two. And yeah, this not having its own unique villain to stand on is kind of a bummer because I like seeing new villains pop in and how they're going to do them. Or uh, Vulture, Mysterio, Scorpion. They've all like they all have ways of getting in here. Yes, Scorpion's or Mysterio's dead, but like his team's still out there. Scorpion was teased and I guess we'll just never get be brought back. <laughs> And then I guess Vulture fell into that portal. Vulture stuck in the spump. But there's room for them. And then also now I'm like, like I kind of made a joke about how he's going to freak out when he has his first class with Dr. Connors now. But also, are we going to get a Norman in this well, They universe? said Oscorp doesn't exist. Are we going to get are we, Like, we're not like, going to get Harry. Like, maybe, or if we do, it's going to be weird because it's like, Peter's going to freak out if he's an Osborn, but it's like Oscorp doesn't exist in this universe. So there's it's going to be a completely different Harry. We've got Kingpin. Mm-hmm. And we've got and there. There are a million rogues that they could go into. They could do Chameleon. They could do your favorite Kindred, which is Harry. But so there's there are places to go, and maybe it will be benefited by not having these big villains. But that does seem kind of like it's kneecapping itself. Yeah, I, I'm still on the on the fence of this was way too big of a movie at this point in this career of this Spider Man. Well, I'm glad you got to enjoy a Spider Man movie because finally. That, that hasn't happened since Tasm 2. Yeah. <laughs> well, Spider-Verse. And that's the other big thing here is that's like, I can't get too excited here because everything this movie does good, Spider-Verse does 10 times better. Yeah. While I pull up our movies for our Y, for, I almost said our Y is awards. Nope. Wrong podcast. For our Hot Trash Awards. What Spider-Man, what alternate Spider-Mans are you hoping to get in into the Spider-Verse 2? We're getting 2099, which I'm a fan of. If we got Superior Octopus, that'd be rad. That would be really I love cool. Superior Octopus. I need to read that run of the comics. Superior Spider-Man or his like Superior Octopus run? Both. Yeah, he's the only one I'm really vying for. I'm not huge on like all the Ultimate Spider-Mans. But wouldn't it be great to get Reef Carney? <laughs> that would be hilarious to get Reef Carney. I don't count him though. <laughs> all right, what's the first one we watched this year? Was it? It was, okay, so this is the why is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he did it again. <laughs> Danny gets a nickel every time he says it. <laughs> This is the Hot Trash Awards. We do we have done this much longer than Why Is has been a podcast. <laughs> this is the movie where we go, or this is the part. <laughs> I've been talking for an hour and I have two more podcasts to record today. Oh, gosh. Okay. This is where we go through the movies that we have watched this year and we decide what is the best, what is the worst, and what is a um, hot, hot Trash movie. The movie that we are going to send to the Hot Trash layer, where it will be, no longer be bad or hot trash, but it will be a cinematic classic along the lines of, I don't remember what we have sent in years Villain. past. Villains and Unhinged last year, maybe? I don't remember. Oh, no, it was Satanic Panic. Oh, it was Satanic Panic. Yeah, yeah. So this year we have watched We Can Be Heroes, Run, Hide, Fight, The Little Things. Gosh, this does not feel like this year. <laughs> Earwig and the Witch, oh. Tom and Jerry, oh. Godzilla, <laughs> Godzilla v. Kong, Cars 2, uh, which we won't count because yeah, i didn't watch it yeah nobody mortal Kombat, cruella pirates of the caribbean uh or not pirates of the caribbean <laughs> pirates who don't do anything <laughs> a veggie tales movie which we also won't count the forever purge escape room old don't breathe Two, the night house malignant suicide squad which we won't count venom let there be carnage dear evan hansen gay pre which i'll let you decide if it counts no okay and has gucci and spider-man no way home so out of these what is the best? I'm going to go with either Godzilla v. Kong or Nobody. Early in the year stuff, yeah. Yeah. There was a really strong run that you did right at Godzilla v. Kong, Nobody. And what was after it? Mortal Kombat. Ooh, Mortal Kombat was also pretty good, too. I wouldn't say it's nearly as good as those other two, no. though. I'd say out of those two, I'd lean towards Nobody. I think I'm leaning towards Nobody. It was the most consistent. Mm-hmm. But for me, and I understand why you didn't pick this, because it didn't hit for you as well as it did for me. But for me, it's Nighthouse. Yeah, I mean, Nighthouse was okay. I, I didn't like it, so I can't. Nighthouse is an 8 out of 10 movie for me, and like so foreign to the other stuff that mm-hmm. we've been watching for this, that it feels like it shouldn't count. All right, what's the what's the worst of these? Uh, run, ahead fight. Easy. 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 <laughs> Easy. Don't you dare. No. What are you going to say? So ideologically, it is the most disgusting. It's also bad. But Earwig and the Witch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Earwig is awful. Earwig has... Okay, what are you going to turn on for your kids? <laughs> <laughs> Neither. I'm smashing the TV. <laughs> Either way would be child abuse. <laughs> it would kill all interests they had in movies. <laughs> I mean, I would never show my kid Run, Hide, Fight. But okay, let's see. Earwig and the Witch is 82 minutes how long was Run, Hide, Fight? 
Run, hide, fight was 109. So yeah, <laughs> it made me suffer for a longer period of yeah. time. Run, hide, fight's the worst. Although I really didn't like watching Don't Breathe too. Like nowhere close to the worst. Yeah. But we also, neither of us said Malignant for best, but I think that's a contender uh, as well. I think Malignant might be <laughs> becoming a cinematic masterpiece. Oh boy, okay. Because I know you don't like old. Okay. Uh, I feel like it'd be heresy to call that a cinematic masterpiece. Now it is time to make the choice. So, old Leviticus. Joe, it's only your choice. I don't get a say in this. Are you sending Malignant I'm to the sending hot, Malignant off the hot the trash sky. side layer? You know, this was a rough year. I don't feel like we had too much hot trash. No, we didn't. But I totally get why you're sending Malignant there. Gabriel uh, can join the other angels. <laughs> <laughs> Malignant was such a fun experience. Yes. He's eating the electricity <laughs> and feeding off the machine. <laughs> the kung fu scene in the police precinct. Oh, one of the best action scenes of the year. Beats out anything nobody had. Oh, yeah. Well, it's been another year. Joe, what have we learned in our third year? Well, our first year wasn't a full year, but, you know, third year of doing this. Uh, We returned to theaters fully. We did. Hot trash is still hard to come by. I think harder to come by nowadays, too. Yeah, I think we're going to have to be a little more selective so we don't burn ourselves out. Maybe maybe start going to some older things. Mm -hmm. Changing up the format a little bit. 2022 will be an interesting year for the podcast. Yeah. Stick around. We're coming into prime hot trash season. The January. January, baby. January and February, we will be busy. So definitely, definitely stay tuned. But for the rest of this year, happy holidays from our family here at the Hot Trash Movie, Hot Trash Universe, Hot Trash Unlimited. That's what it is. I was trying to remember what the U stood for in my podcast. Hot Trash Universe. Uh, I did it again. Very trash mess. There you go. Of our dear Savior's birth 